Hi and welcome to Hackney Church Everywhere. It is such a joy to be with you today as we gather together to worship God. We are expectant that God is going to show up in this time and together we prayerfully await his presence. So why don't you stand to your feet as we worship and let's pray together. God, we thank you that you fill our worship, that you encounter us by your spirit and that you fill us with a renewed sense of who you are and how much bigger you are than our perspectives. Would you meet us again in this new day? Would you encourage and stir us up to follow you in all the things that you're calling us in? In your name we pray, Lord. Amen.
of darkness now is ending in the kingdom of light in the kingdom of light forever under your dominion you're the king of my life you're the king of my God, you put on your life just to give us new life. Now from the lips of the forgiven, and let an anthem arise. Cause Jesus, you're alive. Oh, you reign above it all. You reign above it all. And over. the darkness running out of an empty grave now seated alone in glory enthroned on the highest praise you sent the darkness running out of an empty grave now seated alone in glory enthroned on the highest praise you said and you sent the darkness running out of an empty Seated alone in glory, enthroned on the highest praise, and you sent the darkness running out of an empty grave. Now seated alone in glory, enthroned on the highest praise, you sent the darkness running. Jesus, you reign 
above it all. Let all of heaven and the earth erupt in song. Sing hallelujah to the everlasting one. There is no higher name. Jesus, you reign above it all. Hi and welcome to Church News. Alpha Everywhere begins this Wednesday the 7th of October at 7.30 and now is the time to go along, register your place and to invite your friends. It couldn't be easier to get involved as you can now tune in from your very own home. So let me encourage you to have a pray and call that friend who you could invite to the opening night to come and have some fun and to ask some big questions at this time. It will be amazing. The world around us, always moving, ever changing, always a list, a list of things to do, places to see, people to meet, white noise and a scope of things. Does life ever slow down? Is there something beyond this, beyond us? A safe place for people like you and me. To open up the conversation, to say what I think, to explore life, faith and meaning. Alpha for life's big questions. It really is going to be amazing. Check out Matt's story about his experience on our most recent Alpha. I literally felt like everything was spiraling out of control and um, I've never felt like that before. I had a pretty upsetting um, end to a relationship that I was really happy in um, unexpectedly and everything sort of came crashing down all at the same time. Didn't really know where to turn to. That's kind of where my journey re sort of re begun. But I joined and I sort of soon, you know, very quickly understood that these people were really, really, there was something very special. There was just never any pressure. And we had some really interesting intellectual, heartwarming, honest conversations. Some of the subjects each week were, for me, came at very important moments. I felt like I was sort of drowning again and I sort of wanted to reach out and I didn't really know how to do it. And then that week, the alpha was about prayer and it was like, it couldn't have come at a better time. You know, it's just, it's just beautiful how people can sort of see what you're going through and know what to say. And that was what was special about my group. They were like all very sensitive and just felt very safe with them. I definitely feel like I'm sort of starting to belong to somewhere. And I think I felt quite alone. I was sort of finding my place and finding not just my place in the world or, you know, in the area, but like, within myself. I feel like you, you have a bit of purpose and you have sort of someone you can talk to. It doesn't matter what you're doing. He's just there anytime, all the time. It didn't matter where it was and that's what I learned. I have sort of, sort of this person in my corner, essentially. And that's, yeah, it's, it's quite amazing. It's an amazing feeling. It's a really amazing feeling. To register, go online right now at hackney.church slash alpha and register your place today. Hey, it's so good to see you. Welcome, wherever you are. Thanks for tuning in today. And I'm really praying that God will speak to you today about something super exciting, about how you can be part of making the vision we hold as a church a reality. Today's a super Sunday in the sense that we do this twice a year. Last week, I shared on our vision. And if you missed that talk, let me encourage you, please go back 
Go to our YouTube channel or our website. It's a 20 minute watch, but it's gonna fill in the blanks on where we've been, where we're going and what God is saying to us as a community. Now today, I'm gonna follow up. This is kind of the sequel to last week. And I'm gonna ask the question, here's our vision. How does it become a reality that's actually gonna impact people's lives in the year ahead? So today, I'd love to encourage you, even as you're watching this talk, to pray. Pray for me. I'm speaking across all our services all Sunday. But also pray for you, that God would speak to you, that God would break your heart to move into action in this season. And practically speaking, what I'm going to look at today is how we turn the vision into reality through our generosity. What's our vision? Well, God is calling us to play our part in switching on the lights in this dark season, literally calling us to shine. And I talked about five ways. To recap, in a nutshell, to shine for Christ. That's why Alpha is so exciting. Secondly, to shine as the church, to see churches revitalized, Shoreditch, West Ham, Leighton, Homerton, Hackney, and beyond. Thirdly, to shine with compassion, Lighthouse, 500,000 meals in 2021. Fourthly, shine as community, Connect groups, hundreds in connect groups signing up all the time. Hackney Church everywhere, wherever you're watching us, you are part of this. But also with young people in East London, we're seeing our youth work explode and playing our part in getting ready to make an impact in the area of housing, something we feel God is calling us to as a church. And then fifthly, creativity, that we would shine creativity, that every church would become a cathedral of creativity. But more than that, that God is anointing you to play your part in that. That you would build an extraordinary legacy of light and hope through your life. So those are the things that we feel God is calling us to. But how? How do we actually do that? You know, it's all very well having a dream. Lots of people have dreams. But today I believe that God wants to speak to us about impact. And this isn't like a crazy pipe dream. This is already happening. The stuff we're talking about today, you are already making a difference in. Let me tell you one story as we begin of since our last gift day, somebody's life has been impacted and there are dozens of them. But let me just pull one story out for you today of somebody who six months ago at our last gift day, we last looked at the vision, was nowhere near church. Let me tell you about Shabalina's story. She writes, I was brought up in a Christian household, but never truly understood what it meant to be a Christian. I tried to run from Christianity as I got older. I saw it as an inconvenience and something that had to control and dampen any fun. I didn't really respect myself in lots of ways and was generally just a selfish and immature person. I would suffer with anxieties and panic attacks that were often crippling me in my daily life. And I kept thinking that if I'd passed certain milestones, I'd feel happy. And every time I would, I'd still feel empty and would just tell myself the same thing again. Like, oh, okay, when I get a job, I'll feel fulfilled. But I just felt lost every time. I started to question in myself a lot about the way I was living for a good two years. And every time I'd be desperate enough to pray and ask for guidance on how to approach it, I kept getting Samuel's name in my head, Samuel Taylor, who heads up all our work with young people. And I pretty much ignored this for two years. I thought it was bizarre and super awkward. Eventually, as we went into lockdown, I got out on furlough and the thoughts re-emerged as I had time to think. And again, I'd get Samuel's name and to contact him. So at this point, I was like, hey-ho, nothing to lose. It can't be a coincidence that I'm hearing this voice. So I messaged him and Samuel suggested Alpha online at Hackney Church. I'd heard of it but only from old people doing it. Ha, 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 she writes. But equally, I had plenty of time, so I thought, why not? As the sessions went on, we were addressing the Bible's accuracy from a historian's perspective, and it dawned on me that I'd never actually read the Bible properly and could barely remember a verse. So I started to read the Bible, and as I was reading it, Jesus' word, I had this overwhelming feeling of happiness and genuinely like I was blind and now I could see. Corny, but it's the only way I can describe it. Then she writes this, my whole perspective has shifted. My trust fell to Jesus and my anxieties were lifted. During the healing evening, you mentioned in one of the videos that maybe someone had tonsil pain slash issues and that God was going to remove this. I had stress slash anxiety induced chronic tonsillitis 
for about four years. I haven't had an episode since. I guess my anxiety was a root of my tonsillitis and it had a domino effect because that's just how powerful God's healing is. He full on wiped out every issue I had in one. Isn't that amazing? God on the move in the lockdown through you playing your part in this vision to shine in the darkness. Now, none of this is possible without this vision becoming a reality. So what I want to talk to you about today is how we're going to turn the vision into reality. Now is the time to shine. How? Well, let me explain this using this analogy. Here is a light switch and this is how it works. There are four switches. And while there's power that powers the light switch, the lights only come on if we switch them on. If you're a member of the church, we encourage you to do four things. Number one, to pray. Be involved in a life of prayer. Pray everywhere on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Pray on your own. Cultivate a life of prayer because prayer is power. Number two, serving. Everyone playing their part in making a difference. Find a crew to join. Find an area that you feel passionate about and give your time. Thirdly, belonging. We are a family and we're saving a seat for you at the table. If you're new, come and join a connect group. Connect in. Don't be a stranger. We want everyone to belong as part of this church in this season. Fourthly, giving. Today I want to talk to you about this fourth switch here. This, in a sense, is the most practically strategic one we're going to look at today. In practical terms, the biggest impact you and I can make right now is to help switch this on so the power can flow through to the lights. And that requires every one of us to play our part, moving from being a consumer to being a contributor. Here's the need. Our target this gift day is to raise the shortfall we're facing between now and the end of the year. And that figure is £184,000. Today, I want to take a few minutes to talk through some practical ways that you can be involved in this and some principles behind why we give. Now, there are loads of passages of scripture we could talk about when it comes to generosity. There are, in fact, if you look at Jesus' teaching, he teaches through 38 parables. 16 of those 38 parables are about money and possessions. One sixth of Matthew, Mark and Luke are about money and possessions. In fact, in the Bible, there are 500 verses about faith without which we can't please God. There are 500 verses about prayer. Super important to have a connection with God. But do you know how many there are about money? 2,300. Do you think God might care about how we spend our money? He might be interested in materialism and how we can live in such a way that we exercise the muscle of generosity. The point is this. God really cares about our money, about your money and my money. Or actually, what is his money? If it's in your bank account and you've given your life to Christ, newsflash, it doesn't belong to you or me anymore. It belongs to God. That's because when we come to Christ and we give our life to Christ and at the cross we lay our lives down and we start living his life, that means all of who we are, our bodies, our personalities, our ambitions, our resources, our time, our energy, and our money. In a sense, we're not really converted until we're converted in our wallets, until our bank account is no longer my bank account, but God, here's your bank account. What do you want me to do with this? So the question often in these things is, I hear the principles, but practically, where do I begin? Well, today, I don't want to go into too much detail. There are literally hundreds and hundreds of verses we could look at. But I want to just go to one word that Jesus uses, because I believe, in a sense, this is probably the most important word for releasing generosity in your life and my life. If we want this vision to become a reality, if we want this switch to switch on and power the night to light up lives with the good news of Jesus Christ, then I want to look at one word today that I believe is going to lead us to make that switch come on. Last week, I looked at the Sermon on the Mount, Matthew chapter 5. Now is the time to shine. And in that passage, Jesus teaches through how. He talks about obedience, about radical love, about radical generosity. 
and he teaches about giving. If you want to shine, here's how you're going to do it. He says giving has to flow from the heart, not be for show. That our response to the love of God is generosity in the secret place of our heart, saying, Lord, all in for you. Let's look together. Matthew chapter 6, verses 2 through 4. Jesus says this, when you give to the needy, don't announce it with trumpets as some hypocrites do in the synagogues or on the streets to be honoured by others. Truly, I tell you, they've received their reward in full. In other words, if you want to look good and you're going to use giving as a way to feel good and look good, forget about it. God's not interested. Instead, this is what he says, but when you give to the needy, don't let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. In other words, let it be a secret thing so that your giving may be in secret. Then your father who sees what's done in secret will reward you. So giving is something that happens in the heart. It's a response to the love of God. And I want to zoom in on one word that Jesus uses twice in this passage. It's a very common word. Verse two, so when you give. Verse three, but when you give. That word when is a really powerful word. Notice Jesus doesn't say, well, you know, you're going to shine in the darkness. It's amazing what you're going to do. You're going to love the poor. You're going to do all the stuff. And, and if you feel like being part of this, then if you want to give, here's how. Jesus doesn't say that. He doesn't do like an appeal or a fundraising pitch. He says, when you give, not maybe or if or one day. He says, when. You see, today I believe God is challenging you and me to move from if to when, to move from vision to action, to move from potential to power, to switch the light on today. It's a light switch moment for us as a church. We want to shine, but we have to get to this place where we actually choose when, today, right now. Jesus doesn't say, you know, think about it, maybe get involved in praying a bit and then hang out with me and maybe you can help out a little bit. And then if it all goes really well, a couple of years time, maybe you could write a standing order and be part of the vision. No, Jesus says, by the way, when you give, the assumption is that if you're a part of his story and his adventure, you are giving time to switch the lights on. And Jesus is good. He's kind. He's not like a creep or a bad guy who's trying to rob us. He knows that by giving and being generous, we actually get rewarded by our Father in secret. He, he changes our hearts from the inside out. It's far better to be a generous person. And so today, I'm excited about this talk because I believe that while our vision is super exciting, what's really exciting is when you and I stop being spectators and we become participants. We switch the light on and we move in our own hearts from vision to reality, from consumption to contribution, from watching to giving, from darkness to switching the lights on. And so Jesus doesn't kind of labor the point. He just says, guys, when you give, this is how you do it. Don't make a big show. He assumes that we're giving. And I wonder today if he might want you to move from if to when. Now is the time to shine. You know, I said this last week and I passionately believe this. There are going to be moments in your life, for some of you, in decades to come, when your grandkids are going to say, tell us the story of what you did in the great pandemic of 2020. There must have been hundreds of thousands of people hungry, people without hope depressed at home, suffering from anxiety, locked away. What a, what a moment. What was your response? Tell us what you did. And you're going to tell a story. And in a sense, today you have a choice. The story can be, well, I spent my money on uh, toilet paper because, hey, you know, it was really hard to get in the beginning. And I thought that, you know, when I saw it in Sainsbury's, I was like, I'm going to buy all the Andrex. And I cleared a shelf and I got a shopping trolley. I didn't use it for like 10 years and I've still actually got some of it. And I, I became the king of toilet paper. That's not the story you and I want to tell, right? You and I are called to make a difference. I want to tell my grandkids of how I gave and prayed and got out and helped and became part of a community that made a difference. I want to look back at this season with pride and say, yeah, it was hard, but we were part of this extraordinary community that shone like a lighthouse in the darkness. So five practical things you and I can do today to move from if to when, to switch the light on in our generosity. Number one, set up a direct debit 
right now. You can use a form, we'll walk, walk through this in a moment, but literally in a minute, you can move from if to when and start giving regularly today. You may say, well, hey, look, out. the need is so big, the numbers are so large. If you saw my bank account, you would think you're talking to the wrong person today. You may say, I can't make a difference, my contribution can't help, I don't have the resources. That is not true. You are as much a part of this as me. We're in this together. The truth is you and I can make a huge difference. It's about the heart. It's not about the number. You know, the average regular monthly giver at Hackney Church gives 201 pounds. It's our average regular monthly gift. The smallest regular monthly gift is just five pounds. It doesn't matter in a sense how much you can give. What matters is that you move from if to when. Become a contributor, not a consumer. The expectation in scripture is that we would give 10% of our income to support the church, that we're a part of, the local church that you call home. And that's been the tradition for the church through the ages, a tithe. In fact, in the Bible, it was the law in the Old Testament. You had to give 10% of your income into the work of God. Now, as Christians, we don't actually believe in tithing. Here's why. What we believe in is that actually when we come to God, God frees us from the law. Not that we might negate the law, but that we might exceed the law in obedience to Christ. As Christians, we don't believe in 10%. What we believe in is that when we come to Christ and we die at the cross and we pick up his life and we live according to his power and his spirit living in us, 100% of our life belongs to God. So tithing is like a start of a 10, literally. As the Bible leads us to meet Jesus and we encounter the love of God and the power of the Holy Spirit, in fact, everything we have belongs to God. So 100% of your money, your time, your energy, your ambition, your body, all that you are belongs to God. And as a consequence, in the New Testament, something radical happens. They don't negate the law of tithing, 10%. What happens is, in fact, every example in the New Testament is one of them exceeding the law of tithing. There's not an example of giving in the New Testament where the church doesn't give more than 10%. People don't give more. And that's an extraordinary principle. So let me encourage you, look at what comes into your bank account each month, what you spend your money on, and start giving 10% as a baseline into the, the work of God. Start somewhere. Start moving from if to when. Don't try and work out how little you can get away with because everything you have is God's. William Booth, founder of the Salvation Army, helped millions of people, lifted people out of poverty, changed their lives, encountered, saw people encounter Jesus at a massive scale here in East London. When he was an old man, someone said, hey, tell me your secret. He replied this, and I love this reply. He simply said, for the last 80 years, God has had all there is of William Booth. So that's my first encouragement to you today. Start giving today. Move from if to when. Set up a direct debit or a standing order today. Make a statement of intent. Make a declaration of war on the darkness around you by turning on the lights. Moving from being a consumer to being a contributor. Number two, let me encourage you to give as a group. Recently, a member of our morning congregation came to me and they run a connect group with a bunch of mums. And she said, as a connect group, we want to raise a thousand pounds towards the work of the church. She said, you know, each of us, we don't have tons of money lying around. We're mostly mums. We're trying to feed our kids. And what they did is this amazing group, they got together and over the course of the term, they saved and set apart, like in a jam jar, literally, a hundred pounds each. And 10 of them got together and they gave a gift at the end of that term towards our vision as a church of a thousand pounds. They did it. Imagine what could happen if every Connect group did that together. Number three, contact the giving team. I know it sounds super, super simple, but maybe you're sitting there thinking, I've got a question to ask. I don't know how payroll giving works or, or gift aid or how if I want to give online, maybe your employer will match your giving. That's very common. We found a lot of people give to the church and their employer will match the church giving. Or even if their employer doesn't want to match church giving, they can give directly to the work we're doing with things like Lighthouse. Or you might have a question like gift aid. The government will add 25% on top, but how do they do that? Well, our giving team, an amazing guy called John, who is our giving administrator, he would love 
to chat to you. He's sitting at the end of a phone or the end of email and would love to help make this a really brilliant process for you. So if you have questions, can I encourage you, number three, to contact our giving team. Reach out, we'd love to be in touch with you. The email address, real simple, giving at hackney.church. Giving at hackney.church. Email us today. Number four, can I encourage you to stretch your giving? I know many of you already give very generously because I have the privilege as the rector to write to everyone to thank them. And I write to you personally. You start giving today, I'll be writing to you. Can I encourage you to be bold in this extraordinary season? We're in a moment of unprecedented need. 5,000 meals at Lighthouse last year, 500,000 meals we're aiming for next year. Can I be bold and encourage you to stretch your giving? Some of you, families, members of the church committed, you've been giving so sacrificially, I know. We're in that boat too. You know, Liv and I feel that each gift day, we think, oh, we're not sure what more we can do, but each time we stretch ourselves a little bit, maybe it's increasing our standing order, maybe it's increasing by getting a one-off gift. And what we find is we never regret it. We feel more bought in, we feel more excited. We look back with pride at what we as a church community have done over this season. And for me and Liv and our family, it's always a moment of great excitement when we get to give there and we say, what are we gonna do? How can we stretch ourselves in this moment? Because here's the thing, you can't outgive God. The more you give, the more God gives to you. Not financially, I don't expect a check in my inbox the next week. But what happens is as I lose the power of materialism in my life, as I start to invest in God's kingdom, something happens in me that makes me far more blessed and rich in that sense as a person than I would have done if I had held on and hoarded my money. You know, you can't outgive God. Something happens. Generosity is its own reward. So what we try and do is each gift day, we try and stretch our giving and give a little bit more than we did before. And over the years we've been here, we've done this every gift day. And I'm excited to say I haven't regretted it. I haven't looked back. I felt so invested and so proud of what we as a church community are doing. Another thing we try and do is make this our primary place of giving, Hackney Church. You know, there are loads of good causes. There are, you know, charities that I support that we're we're thrilled to partner with. There are people who run marathons. We, We think, wow, I couldn't even run around the block. Amazing. We'd love to cheer you on. But We don't want that to be at the expense of our giving to the church. Why? Well, the truth is nobody else, other than the members of Hackney Church, whether you're in Leighton or Hackney or Shoreditch, wherever you're watching this, we as a church community share this vision. We're the ones who are supporting this. We're not being supported and paid for entirely from outside of our parish. We as a team are the ones who get the privilege of supporting this church. And so for that reason, can I encourage you to make this your primary place of giving? Why? Well, when we do that, we find the lights come on. We join the dots between the power and the potential. We say, I want to start giving. It means that we see the impact. When you hear of a life being transformed in Alpha, you're like, yes, I got to make that happen. I got to be part of making that possible. Fifth way is this. Can I encourage you today to consider giving a one-off gift in this season to what we're trying to do? You know, bluntly, we're in a season like never before. I've never known a time where the need, where the pressure, where the demands that we're facing as a community have been such. Can your gift make a difference? Absolutely. Can you, by making a one-off gift today, have an impact? A hundred percent. Extraordinary things can happen this season if we're able to connect and shine in the darkness. Let me give you a breakdown, a few things that will happen. A £150 one-off gift will pay for the cost of somebody coming on Alpha. We don't charge our guests for running Alpha. The training, the advertising, setting it up, the time it takes, the organizational cost it takes to put the Alpha course on, costs us money. And there are hundreds of people coming on Alpha. But we want the gospel to be free, but there's still a cost. And that means that 150 pounds, simple gift, will pay for the cost of somebody like Charvelina coming on Alpha. And the impact in her life is gonna be massive for years to come. 
then you may talk about Lighthouse, this vision to serve 500,000 meals. Well, the good news is, through your generosity, we've set this up. We've got a, a lighthouse kitchen built. We've got the kitchen, it's got a cooker, it's got an oven, it's got a sink. It's got one of those blue things that catch flies. It's like legit, it's ready. But when you open the drawers or the cupboards, they're all empty. 2,000 pounds today can pay for kitting out that kitchen. Literally can pay for the crockery, for the pans, for the knives to make that kitchen happen. We haven't got to that bit yet. and. Lighthouse is getting busier. We need your help. £2,000 today, moving from if to when, will pay for kidding out the kitchen. Or £5,000 will pay for the youth, the kids' work, hey baby, the work we're doing supporting young people. Right now, the cost of running that a month is £5,000. £5,000 a month may sound like a lot of money, but let me tell you, it is a fraction of the impact we're seeing in those young people's lives. Literally hundreds of people being impacted. Young people in one of the toughest parts of the world right now for young people to grow up in are experiencing hope and life. And you can't really put a price on that. 10,000 pounds will pay for our running cost as a building, heating, lighting, power over the winter months. You may be sitting in church thinking, it's warm. It ain't gonna be warm <laughs> unless we can pay the bills. Next, 20,000 pounds will cover the purchase cost of the lighthouse van that will roll out across East London. What an exciting news for 20,000 pounds. Literally rolling hope from location to location, full of food to help people go away knowing that they're loved, that they feel valued, that God is not dead, that he loves them, that he's here for them. You can make that happen today. Or, 25,000 pounds, we talked about revitalizing churches. St. Francis of Sisi's great call, rebuild the church. Well, 25,000 pounds can help us kickstart, can be seed funding for one of these locations, Shoreditch, West Ham, to get it off the ground. Today, the decision that you make to move from if to when, to flick the switch on, will have an impact on people's lives six months time and our next gift day, we're gonna hear stories. And you get to be part of that, of writing an extraordinary chapter. You get to tell your grandkids about it. Did you hear about what happened? So that's how you could have an impact. Five practical ways that you can give, stretch your giving, give a one-off gift today. And it will have an impact. Let me tell you another story. Last gift day, remember we all had that time when, back in January where we said we have no chairs for the church and we talked about buy a chair and everyone chipped in and maybe you bought a chair and some people said well look we'd love to not just buy one chair but I'd love to buy a chair in faith for somebody else and we've heard some amazing stories of this let me read you one email I got just this week from a member of our congregation who joined the church earlier this year January the gift day it was her like first time in church she writes this I joined Hackney Church back in January and attended the Sunday when you asked if people would buy a chair for Hackney Church. Since I was new and hadn't given to the project so far, I thought it'd be a great thing to help contribute to and show a way of my support for this new church community. Then she continues, you asked if we might think about someone we knew and if we would buy them a chair too. My flatmate and best friend Alicia immediately came to my mind. She and I had grown up in church together, but we both went separate directions in the years in our faith, in the years that followed. With no expectations, but just the hope that one day she may join me at church, I bought one for her and lifted her journey up to God as I did it. Well, during the lockdown, she signed up to do Alpha here at Hackney Church. And every Wednesday, we joined our group together. This led to many great questions and discussions around faith that we had. Then, fast forward to a few weeks ago, the grand opening of Hackney Church. The person I had sitting beside me in my spare chair was Alicia. Isn't that an amazing story? That somebody responded by not just buying a chair, but by creating an opportunity for somebody else to encounter the Holy Spirit. Imagine your impact that your life can have in this season that now is the time to shine. Now is the time to shine in generosity. Not if, but now. Not when, but today. That today you can be a part in switching the light on 
Somebody like Alicia to have an experience of God's love. Someone like Shavalina, someone who's hungry right now to walk into a church in East London and know that they are loved, that God cares for them. None of this will be possible without you and I responding today. So I'm going to pray and I'm excited. 184,000 pounds, humanly speaking, is a huge number. But with God, nothing is impossible. So wherever you are, let me encourage you to pray and let God speak to you today about his desire and plan for you to be generous. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for Jesus. I thank you that you are calling us to shine in the night, that we are like a city on a hill. We can't be hidden. And Lord, thank you that you are calling us to move from if to when, that you, Jesus, say when we give. And today, Lord, in the secret of our hearts, Holy Spirit, we pray that behind closed doors, you would speak to each one of us about how we might play our part by choosing to switch on the lights today. Come, Holy Spirit, and speak to us. And let me encourage you just in this moment, to let God speak to you. Paul writes, each of us should give as we've decided to give in our hearts. In other words, let God put a number or a response in your heart. Let him speak to you. So let's move on to the practicalities. Can I encourage you, wherever you are, to get your device out, your screen, your phone. If you're watching us on a phone, go grab something else. And we're going to do this together. It's going to be great fun. We're doing this across all our services today. And we don't want to give in a way that's like, oh, it's a bit of a chore. You know, it says in Corinthians, God loves a cheerful giver. The word in the Greek, hilarion. In other words, hilarious. We want this to be a party. So right now in church, we'll be dancing, jumping up and down. Wherever you are at home, get ready to boogie around your living room in a moment. But let's go to hackney.church slash give. Scan the QR code on the screen. Go to the website, type it in, hackney.church slash give, and you'll find our giving page. And hopefully you can see this on the screen. I'm going to scroll through. So give has a lovely picture of Mark Nelson there, baptizing somebody. That's what we're doing. We're bringing people into the kingdom. And then give. And you see the first thing is online banking. And that's where you can take those details, set up a standing order, super easy. That's what we do. That's the way we give. But then you can also do credit or debit card giving. And you could do a one-off or actually you could set up a direct debit using this. Um, So I'm going to do this today. We want to give a one-off gift as a family into this vision. So I've clicked that and I've gone through to a page that says church suite at the top and it has a little secure icon and you know this is like legit you're not on some random website this is us this is our kind of database our infrastructure so once you get to there at the top says my donations are for regular giving you can actually click on that and choose one off which i'm going to do because it's a one-off gift then um donate regularly well we already do that we have that set up as a standing order so i'm going to pass that by and go to one-off donation and that's what liv and i want to do today and i'm adding in the amount And if you're doing that at home, um, take a moment, respond to what God is doing. I'm not going to tell you because we want to give in secret. We're not making a big deal of it. Um, And so I've added the amount and then I'm going to tick the gift aid declaration because I'm a UK taxpayer. That means that if I give one pound, it becomes one pound 25 because the government adds that. So if you're watching and you want to give a gift, whatever you give, and you tick that box, it instantly multiplies at no cost to you. The government add the rest. Then your email address, and I type in my email address. There we go. Click the privacy notice so we can GDPR you. And then you go through to a page that says matches. Sounds like a dating app. <laughs> matches. Found one or more person in our database matches the email address. Okay, so this is me. So I can see it's me, my name. I click on that and then I'm gonna proceed. I click proceed. Then I get to payment method and I'm gonna click select credit or debit card because I'm paying by a debit card today. And then I click proceed. It goes through to my card details. Okay, so card details, I got them saved on my phone. There we go, expiry date. Um, and my CVC is a little number on the back of your card. So I know that one of my so here we go. And then click donate. And I really hope it's going to work. Yes, I've got a green tick. And it goes back to the main site. I 
click on the button that says processing and it says donation successful. Thank you so much for your donation to Hackney Church. And as I said, everyone who gives, I write to you personally to thank you, whether you've given for the first time or given a one-off extraordinary gift towards this season, I'm going to be writing to you. And I can't wait to see those letters coming through in the weeks and days ahead. So right now we're going to worship. Let me encourage you, if you're still wrestling with the form or getting the website to load, um, that's probably a good thing. It means everyone's giving at the same time. So wherever you are right now, would you like to stand? We're going to worship together and the minute we'll gather back for the blessing. Keep going. See you on the other side of this song. Hey, welcome back. Just a blessing before we close for the day. And let me encourage you again. Thank you for giving. Continue to invest in this vision that we'd shine in the darkness. And as we come into land, may I pray for you. 
May God's blessing go with you. May he shine on you. May he be gracious to you and grant you his peace today. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit go with you, remain with you and all whom you love this day and always. God bless you. See you next Sunday. Have a great week.